Hey everyone, welcome back to the F-16 build. In the last episode, we got the fuselage pretty much complete, but what's an F-16 without its wings, right? So that's what we'll be working on today. I have all the molds printed and primed. I just need to finish sanding them smooth to get them ready for the layups. I'll be using a very similar process to build up the wings as I did for the horizontal stabilizer and vertical fin, except when I'm gluing all the internal structure in, I'll try to use a little bit less epoxy to save a little bit of weight. Let's get to it. And the wings are messed up. I was finishing up cutting all the laser cut ribs so that I can get them glued into the wing. And then I realized I have a big problem here. There was some kind of warpage that happened. As you can see, the skin is not touching the mold and it's supposed to be sitting exactly in the mold just like that. And I have to put a lot of pressure on the wing in order to make it sit flush into the mold. I think what happened is my shop that I'm working in here, it's not insulated and it gets really hot sometimes in here. So I think these 3D printed molds were expanding and contracting as the spar epoxy was curing and it resulted in this pretty much. So yeah, there's no way I can use this because the wing's just going to come out all messed up. So I will have to change plans. I think I'm going to abandon the idea of using fiberglass for the wings and instead I will 3D print them. I just started printing with lightweight PLA. This piece here I'm printing, it's for the end of the fuselage. I've been really impressed with how it comes out. It comes out super light, it's really easy to sand, it paints really well, and yeah, I think I'm just going to redesign the wings such that I can 3D print them. It'd be way too much work to reattempt everything, especially with the summer here. These 3D printed molds are just going to keep expanding and contracting and it's gonna make this process really difficult. The ailerons, however, I think they're okay. So it didn't look like they separated from the mold at all. So I will continue making these out of fiberglass and balsa and see how it goes. Okay, so we're back in the Fusion 360 model. This is what the wing was originally going to look like with the fiberglass skins and internal wood structure. But now that I'll be 3D printing it, this is the new model of the wing. I'm planning to print it out of lightweight PLA with 0% infill and just one wall. Because of this, I had to design it in a very particular way. First off is maybe the most obvious difference, the ribs being at 45 degrees. I can't print with supports, so if the ribs were horizontal, it would need to print using bridging, which wouldn't result in clean ribs. 
Plus, with the ribs going along the span of the wing, it will help support some of the bending loads too. The second, but probably most important technique for printing single wall lightweight PLA parts is to avoid travel moves. In other words, make it so that each layer is printed as one continuous line. Lightweight PLA strings a lot, therefore avoiding travel moves will result in cleaner and lighter parts, since you avoid the extra weight of internal stringing that you can't clean out. In order to achieve this, I modeled the wing as a solid body with all the internal structure modeled as very thin cuts. The cuts are so thin that when printing, the material actually expands and bonds together, which eliminates the gaps and creates a solid rib or spar. Alright, let's get printing. These first prints are mostly going to be a test of the overall design and tolerances. Like, will the spar tube and wing screw plates fit into the gaps? Will the spacing I chose for the ribs be enough to support the skin? And will the wing generally be stiff enough? Alright, the inboard portion of the wing just finished printing. Let's check it out. Alright, feels pretty solid. Feels pretty good. Alright, let's get the outboard portion of the wing printed and then head to the shop to see how everything fits. Alright, we're back at the shop. I got the two halves of the wing glued together with CA glue. And I got the aileron compartment cut out. So let's test fit this carbon rod and the, the little tabs that I'm going to be gluing in. This helps attach it to the fuselage. See how everything fits. So this one's for the front. Okay, that's a nice snug fit. Perfect. Okay, same with that one. Really good fit. Here for the carbon rod. Yeah, it's pretty snug. I could probably force it in. Okay, I was able to manage getting the carbon rod all the way into the wing. It was really difficult to get it in, so I'm definitely going to update the design, make that hole a little bit bigger in the part, and reprint it. But other than that, this carbon rod is completely in this portion of the wing, so it's making this part of the wing extremely stiff. So that feels really good. And this back half of the wing, I could flex it a bit. I think... Yeah, it's a little bit flexible. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll add a little bit more reinforcement to this, this half of the wing. All right, I got version two of the wing printed, and it's the one. I'm really happy with how it came out, and I think it's going to work out great for the airplane. So the first change I did was obviously I made the hole for the carbon rod a little bit bigger. So now the carbon rod slides in there with just a little bit of friction, which I like. On the first wing, I wasn't really happy with how flexible the wing was, but also I could twist the wing pretty easily. It, was, it didn't really have much torsional rigidity. So as you can see for the first design, I had ribs only going in this one direction. And for the other design, I added a bunch more ribs going the opposite direction. And then to help with the wing tip to stop it from bending as much, I also added another internally printed spar going right here. So it resulted in a much stiffer wing, both in torsion and in bending. So definitely going to use it for the project.
So now that the wing's complete with the 3D printed design, I wanted to weigh it to see how much it compares to my calculations for the fiberglass wing. I believe my calculations showed 78 grams for the fiberglass wing without the servo. And I don't have the servo installed here, so it should be a fair comparison. So let's see how much this thing weighs. 60 grams. All right, so we saved a little bit of weight going with the 3D printed design. It is obviously a little bit more flexible than what the fiberglass wing probably would have been, but I'm thinking it should be okay. But there's only one way we'll find out, and that's when we go fly it. All right, we got the wing pretty much finished up. Let me show you how it attaches to the fuselage. So first we feed the servo lead through this hole, and the carbon rod goes into the tube in the fuselage. And then this first tab here goes inside the slot in the fuselage. And then I have a hole drilled here with a nut inside the fuselage on the other side. I'll drill a hole through that tab and put a screw in there to hold the wing in place. And then I also have another one of those tabs right here. But obviously currently it's not attached to anything uh, because I'm planning to 3D print a piece that will fill this gap. And it'll have a hole so that it can accept a screw to hold this tab in place. All right, and here it is, assembled in all of its glory with all of the structural pieces that I've built to date. There's still a lot of little things to do to finish up the airplane, but that's gonna wrap things up for this video. I'll have one more video coming out before the maiden flight, and in that video, I'll be finishing up all those little bits, getting the airplane painted, getting all the 3D printed pieces attached, doing taxi testing, and then there's one important test that I wanna do, and that is essentially to run a pack through the plane on the ground just to make sure that the ESC doesn't get too hot. And that's because I'm not using cheater vents on this plane. So I wanna make sure that the inlet duct that I designed will supply enough air to the EDF and not cause the ESC to get too hot. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.